Do you hear they're just blasting their horns? Yeah. Yeah, Jess, yeah, Jess was trying to watch the news, and she's like, you can't hear the reporters just because they're just... It sounds Doing like somebody... This. It sounds like somebody's like holding a chord on a fucking piano, just like ah. It's awful. I'm sure it's really gonna work out. Well, and uh, and I don't know. I I don't know anything about anything that is something. But isn't it the? It, it's it's crying until you get your way. Yeah, but I mean, eventually, I mean, if the government just gives up, then that's such a big signal to say, oh, if you just cry enough, you'll get your way. But well, I don't think they will. Well, yeah, because I guess that would be, that's the same, that is the the parent, you know, you cry because you want Reese Puffs in the cereal aisle. Next thing you know, you're 400 pounds and obese. Because I never, my parents never caved for shit. I wasn't a bad kid. Yeah. My mom says I threw one temper tantrum in a Swiss chalet when I like I crawled under the table and I was freaking out. But apparently I wasn't a bad kid in the first place. I, I think I cried a lot from what I know. You're and a crier. Cam, now, you're a crier. Now tears doesn't come up in 22 years. Now this happens because, uh, th and this is really hard because literally every single movie you watch. Um, oh, no, you just now. Results now, in some kind of waterworks. I wish. Now you just repress all those feelings. Keep them down there. They're just stay in the bottom of the lake. Eventually they'll come up, but we don't know when, and oof, we don't want to know when. Right, right, because I heard that breaking point for you um, was, uh, of course, as we can all remember, the 2001 Stanley Cup Finals. Uh, Ray Bork, uh, months prior, traded to Colorado with a potential chance for him to finally win a Stanley Cup after 22 years in the league. They win. Joe Sackick hands Ray Bork the Stanley Cup so he can be the first one to lift it over his head. And uh, I think that was your breaking point. There was it was it was a combination of so many tears. Your body wasn't able to hold it back anymore. Like, do it yeah it was incredible especially because it was a late game too oh, we would back. have been on the west coast yeah that's uh, tough. or you know at least the central division uh cam that was really hard for you that was heartbreaking colorado's mountain time that was that, that, that one really hit you personally aren't you a colorado fan i liked colorado back in the day yeah now you're over that you just don't watch hockey anymore probably a mix of everything like i was always a leafs fan yeah but you know when you played, like, you're a Leafs fan, but undeniably, in any sports game, the Avalanche or the Red Wings were the best any team to play with in an NHL game from, like, 98 to 2005. Yeah. It was just, it was the fucking Red Wings dynasty or that NHL 2004 Colorado Avalanche lineup. You had Forsberg, Sackick, Adam Foote, Rob Blake, Patrick Waugh, Alex Tangay, Chris Drury, Paul Correa, Timu Solani. It was just that's you know that's who you want to play with. Timu Especially, Salami was on the Detroit. Now Timu Salami, yeah, he was on a he was on a, he was on a completely different team altogether. Timu Salani. Um, on Team Musa. Now you're thinking Team Mussolini. <laughs> Mussolini, yes. Yeah, Salani played there for a uh, for a season. Yeah, I think the same time as Korea did, of course, you know, in the twilight years. And, and they that, went to the Ducks after that. In that kind of like you're chasing a ring kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because before that, they were at the Ducks. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Good. All right. Well, that's sports talk for you. Sports talk is the Fan 590. Yes. Uh, call, call in with your request. What do you think of trading Austin Matthews um, to the Raptors? Hot takes now. I mean, pros. Get it right off the bat. Pros. He's like 6'2", I think, in the first place, right? So he would, starting he would, At least that's a good starting point. You know, he's not a little Theo Fleury we're trying to, we're trying to sign over there. Familiar with the ACC. He's familiar with the ACC. Doesn't exist anymore. Sorry, the Scotiabank Arena. The Scotiabank Arena, of course. Um, he's American in the first place. That's that's kind of three. He's kind of three for three in terms I don't of know if that uh, helps. Um, because he's he he's born in a city with a much better with a better, much better basketball team. Arizona, <laughs> Phoenix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do they yeah. have a good basketball team currently. Yeah, the best in the league right now. Really? Yeah. You're telling me forty one and nine. Did, I think did they buy their um, team? I mean, obviously they bought their team, but like, did they do the mega trades to get their team? No, they're pretty well. They're pretty well drafted. 
Oh. Like their their biggest like yeah their their big core of Devin Booker and DeAndre Ayton they're drafted. Uh, Chris Paul was the big difference maker, but um, wasn't isn't Devin Booker a wrestler as well, or am I thinking of a different Booker? I think you're thinking Booker T. Booker T. <laughs> Former WCW champion Booker T. Yes, that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, yeah. It's no crossover. I'm fairly certain. I, I'm <laughs> and when I say fairly in this particular case, I'm gonna say uh, they're a hundred percent not related. Have you ever seen in the same room? Um, oh, no, I think about it. I never have. Just saying. Think about it. Don't think about it. Wait, you're saying they're the same person or that they're just related I'm in just any way? I'm saying if no one's looking into it, then we don't know for certain. Right. Of course, Devin Booker, as we know, uh, tag team champion from Harlem Heat <laughs> back in the day. Uh, Devin Booker, a two-time WWE Hall of Famer. Wow, really? Yeah. As Wait, you mean Booker T. Dev- Devin Booker T. <laughs> Devin Booker T. Yes. I want to see the birth certificate. <laughs> yeah, show us your birth certificate, Booker T. Or Devin Booker. Oh, yeah, is it the same one? Oh, let me guess. It's up and it, we can't find it. Because sure. as we know, Booker T's uh, birth certificate says, like, Booker T. Um, it doesn't say his real name. Uh, we know this because The Undertaker similarly says first name, the last name Undertaker. <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, that's about it. Same with The Rock. The Rock. Yeah. Um, yeah, he actually had to legally change his name to Dwayne Johnson. Yeah, crazy. Yeah. The, the, Hollywood hates the mm-hmm. when, uh, in casting things. It's too, too confusing. Yes, exactly, right? The Johnny Depp. Yeah. Uh, Your favorite actor. My favorite actor, as we, as we found out... Um, a couple weeks ago here on the podcast. Not your pirate. He's not my pirate. You ready to kick this shit? Let's kick it! Continuing tonight on two season of pod. 96.7 on your Two season a pod, 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 yeah, I'm trying to get my energy up. I'm really tired. You drink, you're drinking coffee, so that is traditionally the thing you should do if you're trying to get your energy up. Maybe some pre-workout, two season a pod, episode 105. My name's yep. Cameron Osborne. My name's Cameron LeClaire, and this is The National. <laughs> yeah, been watching a lot of CBC Gem these days. The National's a great program. Uh, so right when I wake up, that yep. is what's on my television when I emerge. It's kind of sad, though. Do you find mm-hmm. that? Just uh, the news in general? I find that if I start the day with the news, it's never, like, I remember the, when I realized it, it was when they stopped reporting COVID cases because for the longest time, you'd start off the national and be like, there was 2 billion COVID cases today. We're all going to die. 2 billion. Yeah. By the way, a little sidestep, right? But a little tangent of what you're saying. This is a COVID podcast now. It's exclusive. Oh, God. It's exclusive. It's exclusive. <laughs> Did you get that memo from corporate? Damn they it. sent it down. They're saying every show needs to arbitrarily talk about it um, without any specific <laughs> without any specific direction. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I think the news, the news presently uh, isn't too stoked um even the way they frame some of the news stories just about the olympians the uh oh yeah the winter olympics are coming up soon and they're phrasing it like the olympics are coming (sighs) (sighs) it's like it's like there should be one person back there going like luge baby yeah oh Um, man i watched a the cbc also has a olympics channel and i tuned in they had the bobsled team uh, and they were just talking about the bobsleds. You'd be like, we're, we're going to try and win this. Bobsled's season. always cool. Is oh, Jesse but- Lumsden pulling up the rear still for <laughs> Canada's bobsled team? Very possibly, yeah. Very possibly him and Booker T. Um, but anyway. Little known fact, Booker T's Canadian. <laughs> it's canon. That's canon. Um, but anyway, they're, I'm watching this interview or this you know prep for the show or And they're going, a lot of these athletes two years ago were not even doing bobsled. And mm-hmm. I'm thinking to myself... This isn't a real sport, then. No, well, that's the uh, that's the Jesse Lumsden thing. Uh, Jesse Lumsden, famous Canadian uh, CFL uh, running back. 
Have some water. Oh, let, let, let me. Let me let me let me pour some water here. Jamie, okay. come out water. Yeah, friend of the show, Jamie, uh, made his way all the way from Markham here. Just gotta, just gotta help us out for the day. What's up, Jamie? We're listening to you. What's up, old slops? Uh, Jesse Lumsden, um, Canadian fullback, eventually, um, you know, was recruited because the guy can pump his legs. There's some it, Bob says it's a type of sport where you just need that one little thing. Well, I right? think then and then just good. It's like general athleticism. General athleticism, and then just knowing how to cut corners. But I feel like that's kind of a skill thing, less of a power thing possibly well i may have said this before on the show right my dad was asked to be on the uh the university of western rowing team yeah as the guy who calls the pace out he stands at the front because my dad is five foot he's shorter than me and the timing of a metronome sm- sm- well, <laughs> <laughs> musical ability aside he's shorter than i am and smaller than i am in weight also so no way your yeah, dad's yeah. shorter than smaller than you are yeah, I'm probably I'm I'm somewhere between five seven, five eight. My dad is five five on a good day. Wow. Um soaking wet hundred pounds. Soaking wet. No, I'd say like a buck now, I'd say he's probably like one twenty, maybe. Wow, he's a small dude. Yeah, yeah. So that's why he was asked to be on this team because he had a general he played football and hockey all throughout high school. He had a general level of athleticism and that you need somebody to be so small that it's not going to affect the weight of the actual big athletic rowers. I guess that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He declined the offer cuz he didn't want to wake up he had to wake he would have had to wake up at like 4 a.m. every day to go to practice and he have his Ricola. Row. <laughs> row. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Row. It was terrible on the throat, the nodules. Um all these things too but yeah even even the way yeah this uh to me so things like luge and bobsled should be fun the skeleton oh yeah it's what a, a crazy one. event the biathlon yeah some of our favorites here on the show i don't think uh i guess this is the first um podcast we've had through the winter olympics we've had previous uh olympic episodes yeah olympic type episodes we've had similar top fives march madness aside. maybe we should uh for next week you know as we gear up for the actual olympic ceremony uh who knows we'll incorporate into the show somehow yeah i'm i'm definitely gonna be tuning in quite a bit now the timing is bizarre because it'll be going on a lot of times overnight but i guess if we just watch the uh, recaps yeah i don't care so much for the live thing um if amazon prime does their uh, cbc does it really well yeah, Prime did it well also. As long as I have that kind of access, because that's the thing. I'm just going to watch it while I'm eating my breakfast yeah. or while I'm eating lunch or... What time are the, can- the Team Canada games going to be? Do I just... Yeah, I mean, that's a good way to do it is if it's... um, If the games are overnight or something, wake up in the morning, don't touch the phone, don't look at the computer... Get onto Prime without seeing anything. Click on the sporting event. Because Cam, because you have your score app sending like furiously sending you notifications I, I anytime have, something happens. Yeah, I have my Google Homes go off every time. Yeah, you any, have one of those alert- scores in the NHL. Yeah, you get just an, constantly going you get off. You get an email that time and any goal is scored in a hockey game on the planet. Um, working with new technologies to work on like uh, like kind of like twelve year old house league games also. Yeah, we're pay- we're paying some people to develop. Some- yeah, some bi- a bi- hey, big big development it, 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 here. Insider news. We don't want to insider ch- a little bit of inside baseball. A little too much inside baseball stuff. The shareholders aren't going to appreciate that one, but keep it in the pipeline. It's, we'll it's keep on it. The we'll keep it in the pipeline. Uh, looking forward to some of these Olympic events, and none of them are hockey. So uh, what do you mean none of them are hockey? I don't think so. Yeah, they are. Well, we're playing hockey. Yeah, this year. but isn't it like our Spangler Cup roster? I'm still gonna watch okay you're still gonna watch yeah yeah i mean it's not the nhlers but yeah it's not you know we have eric stall as captain former stanley cup champion josh hosang leaves prospect never heard that name in my life oh you will you have prospects week. we got a bunch of prospects going so, prospects it's a, so, old guys. so it's a junior spangler cup mashup squad playing yeah, I mean, against other junior spangler cup mashup squads or european professional teams or european professional teams Right. So yeah, not the creme de la creme. Hate to say it. That's okay. Hate to say it. Hate to say it. Hey, it's supposed to be an amateur tournament. It you, is supposed to be an amateur in the first place. So. Yeah, but what, what's an amateur even mean anymore these days? I'm pretty sure not paid. <laughs> so you just have to be it. homeless to be in the Olympics? Uh, no, you could have another job. Just not in that sport. You know, it's like I'm sure you know many gymnasts, or I'm sure some of those smaller or the sports that flat out don't have a way that you can actually profit during. Like you probably have a job. You know, you're like a. 
you work here, you work there. You oh. teach. Exactly. And then kind of like parts of your income are probably supplemented by various Olympic committees and things like that. And certainly coaching, training is paid for. And- so th- this way then, they, the hockey team, still they're all still are professional hockey players. Yeah, they're still technically tech, uh, professional hockey players, except maybe, you know, any of the guys that are coming from the OHL That's or still, from college you, you teams. You get paid for that. You do get paid for that? Yeah. Like college actual, teams, you do College don't. teams, no, not NCAA stuff. So, yeah, somewhere in the middle, I'd say. Um, me. Something's not sitting right in my gut. It's the first day after um, sober January, so I don't think the... Uh, I think the alcohol is just not sitting well. Oh, last night was the big hurrah. I didn't know you were doing a sober, uh, sober Jan. You didn't? No. Yeah, yeah. It was a, uh, it was nice refresh on the body. Mm-hmm. Would recommend. I know a lot of people do sober February, but now I got it out of the way. So now I can liquor it up. Maybe sober February because it's the shortest yeah. month. I take it. Well, Cam, here's a little rule for you. Some days have 28 months. Some have 31. How many have 26? Okay, some days have 31 month days. Some months have 31 days. Some have 28. How many How many have 26? All of them. <laughs> classic. Yeah. <laughs> classic, yeah. classic one. Uh, let's get into the show. Let's get into the show this week by uh, first reviewing last week uh, because we got some notes. Notes. We got some notes. We got some notes. 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 We got some notes. And amendments. Yes, we do. Uh, we're talking about London, Ontario. Uh, well, my dad famous. My dad famously called into Q107 and won Blue Jays tickets <laughs> because he correctly guessed that Lundo, London, Ontario, is known as the Forest City. It's kind of like its nickname, I guess. Uh, Cam, what's Waterloo's nickname? Tri City Part. Nice try. Uh, it actually doesn't <laughs> have a nickname. <laughs> <laughs> it was a loaded question. However, uh, the Waterloo Town model motto is stability. Really? Uh, yes. That sucks. And then uh, it be ca- hardcore. That's what. Should- and then, <laughs> the Kitchener. I didn't. I didn't write Kitchener's down here, but uh, it's something like uh, the the home of industry or something. God, something these are the worst things. names ever. Can yeah. we like? Can we make a vote to redo these? Can I call my counselor? Well, yeah, especially because the motto is the hard part, uh, you know, because it's it's arbitrary enough, kind of in the first place, which is weird. Um, Kitchener, cyclists are welcome here. <laughs> I know back Waterloo, in the, cyclists aren't. I know in the early days of Wikipedia, um, uh, my friends and I at school would always try to change uh, Albania's motto to live fast, die young. Why particularly that? thought it was funny um, i don't think it's not funny they just thought it was I thought it was funny something. and then no i don't think it was referencing something we thought it was funny and then you do it and then next computer class see if it was still like that or somebody else would sign on at lunch and then see because it's wikipedia right it's just, yeah uh and then we got our school's uh whole network shut, <laughs> shut, shut what down what do you mean yeah 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 so if you intentionally spam wikipedia they do something about it Really? Yeah, yeah, because they don't want you to intentionally be spamming Wikipedia because that's, you know, that kind of goes against the whole point. Hmm. So you, that school's network's no longer allowed to edit things? Uh, they were, they couldn't go on Wikipedia. Wikipedia wouldn't open. Big, like, error message would come up. They contact the service provider. I only know this because they, the teachers were able to narrow it down that it must have been one of the senior students. Right, it was too specific and odd. Albania, live fast, die young. Like, oh, they found out specifically what it was too. Yes, yeah. Okay. This was early days of Wikipedia. This wasn't like the current traffic levels that we see. This was like you know, I was probably uh, two thousand uh, twenty, two thousand and five, maybe. Okay. Okay. You know, two thousand three. So, but so Wikipedia had a big error message saying. We're tired of you playing. We're tired of your bullshit. Yeah, tired of your bullshit. We know you're the people adjusting Algeria. Albania. Albania. Live fast, die young. Um, I'm just surprised that it had that much information where the teachers actually found out that. Yeah, so they were able to narrow it down to, like, it was one of the senior classes. Yeah. Just because it was, like, yeah, of course, it's yeah. too kind of mature of a thing. So kind of, like, between grades maybe sixes, but definitely seven eights. Weren't able to determine who it was. Yeah. Nobody got in trouble for it. Uh, and I think we were kind of blocked off Wikipedia for a month or something like that. Yeah, it's funny because, like, even if you did get caught, you're like, what's the punishment? You're like, Let's go over the crime here, people. Yeah, like, it's it's like a cyber crime. Yeah, it's like hard, <laughs> hardly even a crime. It's like that. that's the mischief part of it. You're in detention for mischief. What did I do? 
Yeah. Oh, that was my number one crime in uh in <laughs> elementary school was just mischief. Do we know uh, what mischief is? Like, like what what you what, can get arrested for mischief. Oh, like criminal mischief? Yeah. Um it, well yeah, it would be things like uh I know I don't know. It would be mischievous but in a criminal kind of way. So I would say like spray painting a wall. No, that's vandalism. There's no criminal mischief? Hmm. Painting, just flat out painting a wall. <laughs> like if How you, do you spell mischief? Uh, M I S uh, C H H I E F. I before E, except after C, unless if pronounced A as in neighbor or way. Wow, I did not know that was a thing. No, that wasn't a rhyme that was ever instilled upon you. Oh, you're right. Okay, so it's uh, who willfully destroys or damages proper property, renders property dangerous useless, inoperative, or ineffective, interrupts, obstructs, or interferes with the lawful use, enjoyment, or operation of property, or obstructs or interferes with any person of lawful. Yeah, look at that. I thought that was just vandalism. Yeah, I guess so. The criminally mischief, which it just sounds fun, though. Oh, right? I know. Yeah, if you want to get one charge on no. there, if there's someone's mischief. doing a background charge, and you Loki, go, the we God saw you did a things. mischief in 06. You're like, Whoa, tough year. Yeah, it, was good. it says here, the back of 2006, you were a little mischie- m- m- mischievous. That hasn't stopped me now, chief. Looks like, looks like back in the day, you were a little stinker. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> did my, uh, did my time. Got kicked off Wikipedia. <laughs> Yeah, banned from Albania. Yeah, banned from the one other Wik- web page. Wik- Wikipedia page that is. Yeah. <laughs> they know my name. Uh, final note I got here. <clears throat> um, it was in reference to my. <laughs> uh, I guess in reference to my foot callus. Can you grow a bunion on the back of your foot? Uh, the answer is no. <laughs> which uh, is thankful because I do continue to have this callus on the back of my foot. A bunion is a bony bump that forms on the joint at the base of your big toe, so it can only happen in one place. Uh, but you know, you should be. You should. Can check we get? It. Can we get a doctor on here that maybe you could like redact that point and have a different point? That'd be fun. That doctor would be great. Doctor McCullough, yeah. maybe. Doctor McCullough. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> famous foot doctor. Who, famous foot doctor who believes um, in those on the back of your heel of course uh you know one of the stars of tlc's hit program is that uh, a bunion my, my <laughs> yeah and, and which is a spin-off from the my feet are killing me <laughs> show that, that which exists. is a spin-off from my dogs are barking yeah it was spin-off from my dogs are barking which uh, which oddly enough spin-off from john and kate plus eight and uh <laughs> tlc the teal everything keeping inside the tlc family uh and cam we're going to uh our, that's our final note here we're gonna play uh, a second round of a game that we played last week um, because last week we took a look at the Coachella lineup. Ah. Um, so uh, this week we're going to play another round of this game where we're going to take a look at the Lollapalooza lineup. All right. You want to send well, it over to me? Here? Yeah. I've just sent you a link um, over there on Facebook, so you'll be able to open it up. No problemo. Great. Uh, Lollapalooza is this summer um, for four days. So uh, take that, Coachella extra day on you from july 28th to july 31st at grant park chicago illinois we're gonna kick off on thursday remember the rules of the game you got to be able to at least partially sing a part of a song by a person an artist a creator on the line uh to kind of somehow equate to some kind of point system which will then show how in touch we are with the youth cam coming in on thursday we have miley cyrus uh yes I came in like a wrecking ball. Perfect. Uh, Elenium? Nope. Uh, K. Trinata? Heard of them? Don't know. And Playboy Cardi? Again, same thing. Um, yeah, I know they exist. I know Playboy Cardi exists. Sounds like a great, great name. Uh, he spells both Playboy and Cardi. War- wrong. How? Never mind. Uh, okay, coming up on our second line here, we have Black Pumas. No. Steve Aoki? Aware, but I don't think I know a song. I know. I, I think if I'm thinking of a Steve Aoki song, it's probably a Skrillex song. I can picture Skrillex songs. Steve Aoki. <laughs> what does that get? <laughs> Cake Face? Is it, that must be a song. Yeah, we got to be able to sing it. Uh, Jimmy Eat World. It just takes a tap little bit. Yeah, little uh, St. John. No. All Time Low. Uh, I think they have a song like, 
And I'm at the dog time. Lo, 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 lo. No. No, okay. No. Uh, Lune. Nothing. Lunav, sorry. You forgot uh, Chai Mi. Oh, Chai Mi, sorry. And T. I don't know that, who that okay. is. Okay, coming up next, uh, Kim Petrus. Nothing. Cash Cash. Nope. Oliver Tree. Nope. Roshi. Nope. LP. Nope. Olivia O'Brien. Nope. Orville Peck. Mm, heard, but don't He know. was on the Coachella list. I think that's where we heard about him. Uh, Flo Millie. No. Day Glow. Nothing. Paris, Texas. Not a place. Shim- <laughs> uh, Shammy name? Uh, no, I don't know what that is. And Domberski. N- nothing. Okay, so. so we're th- off on that one. Yeah, third line we were off on, and even that second line here was only a couple things. Uh, coming up on day two here, Friday, we have Tyler the Creator. Uh, Tyler the Creator, yes. The song I will choose is. Fuck, it's so hard when you have to think of it off the yep. cup. Uh, we're gonna go with uh, go something on Goblin. Goblin. Oh like yeah, the, I'm a motherfucking boy, boy, Goblin. Boy, 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 boy. I'll give you that. Uh, Marshmallow. Again, don't I don't know if he produces music. He just I has think the he's head. a DJ. I, I know I can picture the Marshmallow DJ I think I can song, sing the song with Lil Peep. Turn up the bass. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how that one goes over. Roddy Rich. Uh, yeah, he does the um. Fuck. That, what's that Roddy Rich song? Um, God, this is so hard when you have to just think of it off. It's hard. And which think of a fucking song, right? Yeah. But it shouldn't be that hard. Think of a Jeff Rosenstock song. Um, think of a Beatles song. Like either it's thinking of a song. But by I know somebody. there's a Roddy Rich song that I really like too. Oh, okay. I put the new forges on the Jeep. I drop into the bloody bottoms is underneath. I'll give you that one. Uh, Jack Harlow. Uh yeah, he has a couple songs that I like, but I don't like do you happen to know who, um, um I know he has a verse on uh there's a song that just likes by Lil Nas X. Hmm. That he is like the featured artist on, but I can't think of him. Uh coming up on our second line here, Polo G. Nothing. Suicide Boys. Connor likes them. I don't know why. Didn't you like one of their albums really a lot? I've never heard of a group called Polo G or no. Suicide Boys. Oh, okay. Suicide Boys. I thought Connor likes Suicide them. Suicide Boys. I don't think I've ever heard of them. Uh, we have Lauv. Maybe just Love. Maybe that's probably not true. Love. No. Givian. Nope. Uh, Jazz. Jows. Ja- Jows. <laughs> no. uh, Subtronics. Nope. O- uh, Omar Apollo. Nope. Arizona Zervix. Nope. Or Zervas. Sorry. And Jacob Banks. Nothing. Okay. Let's go so next day. made it hardly through the first round. Coming up on Saturday here, we have Post Malone. Yeah. Charlie Bean, but a bit of big boy. With a but a bit of big boy. I'm saying, wow. Yeah. Journey. We all know one song. Nope. Don't stop believing. It's Don't on the wet. It's on the do not playlist, Cam. That's why I can't listen see, to no, it. Because see, no, we want "Carry On My Wayward Son" because it has that whole. Well, old slobs, let us know to spotgmail.com. Do you want to hear Kansas's "Carry On My Wayward Son" at Cam's wedding? Let us know. <laughs> um, okay. Um. So we said uh, Journey, Megan the Stallion. Uh, again, no. So we, I think we experienced this last yeah. on, on the Coachella one. We know who she is, but it's like I couldn't. Uh, and Limp Bizkit. I think I know a song by them. I keep rolling, 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 rolling. Oh, that's rolling. them. Okay, no, yeah. No. My way or the highway. Yeah. Um, just one of those days where you don't want to wake up. Everything oh, is <laughs> fucked. Everybody <laughs> sucks. Oh, that's great. I, yeah, I'm a big Lemisk fan over here. Let us know. Just about gmail.com. Triple red. Trippy red. Trippy red. No. Uh, slander. Uh, no. Young the Giant. Uh, yes, but I don't. I don't know okay. any songs. Uh, Freddie Gibbs. Yes. Uh, Freddie Gibbs. We'll go with um, Slam. Everything. Okay. Uh, Angels and Airwaves. No, I don't think they did Hey Delilah. <laughs> no, that's not <laughs> Hey Delilah. Are you singing Miss Murder? Is that what you're saying? I think you're Probably. singing an AFI yeah. song. Yeah, you're uh, right. Yeah, Angels and Airwaves is that uh, Tom DeLonge other project, but I also couldn't name you a single song. Uh, Mount Joy. Nope. Ian Dior. Uh, no. I recognize that name from a Machine Gun Kelly song. Uh, okay, but you made it through to that third I, line because line. you got Freddie Gibbs. Uh, Mark Ribillet. No. Ribillet, maybe. Uh, Whitney. Yes. Uh, they do a, um, what do you call a cover? A cover. I know a few songs, but... Almost heaven, 
West Virginia, Bros Mountain, Trains on the Blue okay. Water. Uh, Oliver Heldens. Nope. Tate McGray. No. Cautious Clay. That's a good name. That is a good name. Uh, BIA. Yeah, we're, you can keep reading them. I'm... Trevor Daniel. Nope. T Knight. Cave Town. Drama. Lost Kings. No, but we move wow, on to the next Wow, moving on to this last round. Saturday might be the day for you to go to Lollapalooza. Monophonics. Porsches. Jessia. Cannons. Vintage Culture. CID. The Backseat Lovers. Michigander. Glove. Joy. Yeah. Ola we, we, Doken. We, we can't do anything there. No. Uh, Sunday. Final day. Let's see if this day we got to go. Foo Fighters. What if I say you're not like the others? What if I say you're not the... <laughs> it's also hard to like what song is the one you want to say if you know like a couple. Uh, young Thug. Uh, what's a good Young Thug song? I know him. I we, we got the, I'll we believe you. I mean, you got one here on the line, anyways. Brockhampton. Um. Yes, but we. we all, this we, happened last week, Cam. I think if anything, hard. you need to be able to sing a Brockhampton song. Let me think. What's right a now, Brockhampton song they can sing of. Um. Put a boom. Put a boom. Boo -doo -doo -doo. The lyrics are hard. Well, you have some melody there, so maybe I'll give it to you. Uh, it's called "Sweet." The song I'm thinking of. Next up, we have "Modest Mouse." Yeah. I, okay. You know the song I'm singing of? I don't think so. I don't know. I, I, I just walk, know Float take On. Take a walk. That's all I was going to go. Okay. Oh, Next Float line. On. All right. Uh, G Herbo. No. Alice in Wonderland. We no. saw them last week on the other thing, though. Uh, Brittany Howard. No. Bands of Ho Band of Horses. <sighs> Dermot Kennedy. Nothing, man. Nothing. Uh, I had the next line too. A couple on the next line too. Yeah, I well, that doesn't done matter. J, J Mafia or J Pig Mafia in the front bottoms. Uh, that doesn't matter. But Saturday seems to be like your day to go. You kind of made it through that fourth line. Isn't that probably because that's just the most popular day? Uh, who knows how they book? Who knows how they book shows? You know, that's in Chicago. Where was the other one that we in looked Chicago. at? In uh, Chicago, Coachella is somewhere in and around like the California desert type of thing. Oh, cool. Yeah. Cool. Oh man, I can't wait for next week's lineup. I should start listening to music. I looked at my uh, Spotify twenty twenty whatever uh, recap. Twenty twenty whatever. It was basically just spin songs, like the songs that you listen to when you're cycling. Spinning? Yeah, I'm like I didn't listen to much music last year. Sad. Yeah. Trey sad. Maybe that was it, or you didn't, or it was just songs that came up in playlists. Okay, maybe you need to start making your own playlists out of songs that you like. I don't like songs. Then what do you like? Podcasts. So you listen to podcasts when you spin? Uh, no, only when, when I spin. That's just the spin music that just kept popping up, though. Oh, okay. It was the, so, it was the same track. So it wasn't like I. You, you're like I didn't. But that's what I'm saying. You need to make the playlist using your own originality. I did. They're my spin playlist. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And what's wrong with that? Well, spin playlists are good for when you're spinning, but that's about it. Do you yeah. know what I mean? If like, you're just I, around the house, you're not putting on music. Yeah. No. I'm gonna take the sweater off. Okay, you're gonna do that. I can see the uh, the same thing though. Like we have the Google Home uh, beside the di or you know kind of around the dinner table. So you'll say like, "Hey, play some jazz music," and then it's always the same playlist that goes on. I know, kind of. But, th but I'm thinking like, "Hey, at the end of the year, it's gonna go like, you fucking love jazz." Yeah, <laughs> it's you're like, like, it's like I don't, but we put it on because it's, you know, we're eating dinner and it's just filling the space there. With any yeah. <laughs> we can't put on Jeff Rose. It's filling. Talk. It's filling the deafening silence between me and my partner. Exactly. At the dinner table. Deafening silence, yeah. Cam. Uh, those poetry classes you've got to are really helping out. Yeah, I'm, I'm moving away. I, I took the AP. Uh, Segway class and moved yes. it over to <laughs> as well, of AP course and, of course as we know Cam tried to take a course uh and how to become better at segways and actually became how to become better at uh driving those little two wheeled things that tourists drive around in popular downtown locations. So I guess you're saying that Cam he took the AP Segway course, however, in classic fashion it ended up being an advanced course for those two wheeled uh vehicles that tourists move around on. You finally sorted it out uh yeah that one's tough i'm also taking a greek class right now and uh i i find it funny the words they're teaching me okay don't really make much sense right right because you thought they would say um can i get a bite to eat yeah, oh, oh yeah 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 you thought you thought and you thought they would say you, you'd be like hey excuse me teacher how do i say can i get a bite to eat no and they're you, like say carrot and cinema carota cinema 
Right. I don't need to know these things. I'm not going to the cinema, and I'm not asking for a carrot. Well, and that's what was really funny because you have no plans to go to Greece. You just I do. Want, you just want to be able to speak in kind of like a vague Greek accent, but in English. Nero, Nero. Yeah, and then nero. you're hoping that maybe you can kind of like. I uh, have to repeat myself again. Nero, Nero. <laughs> yeah, can yeah. I have some water? Water. Yeah, you're kind of hoping. Uh, you're, ki- you. you're you're kind of hoping that um, you can kind of maybe be able to like kind of. Get people down on a price if you're kind of buying something, you know, just due to a language barrier. Maybe look I would it like up. to. Well, I'd like me and Shannon. I think we're going to go on our honeymoon in Greece, but because Audrey has family in Greece, we don't have to go to the tourist traps. We can stay nearby them, <laughs> mm-hmm. and then we're good. So if I can just, they don't speak any English, so I need to not a lick. Don't even know what I'm saying. No, they just say white boy. Big listeners of Two Season to Pod, though. Yeah, I'm big sure. supporters of the podcast here. Yeah, big supporters. Um, but yeah, so uh, Greek is hard, but I know a few words now. Keroto, nero, ine, um, cinema. Uh, I forget the other ones. I got a few words in there. Yeah, are you doing the Duolingo thing? Is that you're making it happen? Yeah. Yeah. Something to do. Something to learn. Mm-hmm. Keeping my brain firing. Yeah. No, it's a good one. It's a good one, Cam. Glad to hear it. Glad to hear you learn a new language. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to be fluent in like a week. That's how it takes. That's all it takes, right? I think for you, that's how long you ex- expect, expect something yeah. like that to take. Quick turnarounds. Live fast, die young. Yes, very much so. Just like Albania. Yeah. Just like Albania. <laughs> Imagine they saw that. They were like, we like that. Yeah, then- <laughs> but if it was adopted as their country's uh, motto. I mean, yeah. it's a pretty cool motto to have. You're on YouTube looking at presidential speeches from that country, and you're and it's like, <laughs> like, in 2006, we saw something, and we loved it. Yeah, yeah I mean, next thing I know, uh, I'm kind of responsible. Me and my little friends are responsible for a huge social uprising. Yeah, you're reading the subtitles on this thing. You're going, I can't believe this. <laughs> yeah, we want to thank that little French immersion school in southern Ontario. Southern Ontario, Canada. Let's uh, let's get into something on the show here, then. Shall we? We only have uh, two more weeks to go. Uh, so we got to wrap up this whole season nicely. So let's get ourselves into a MacGyver and Fiverr. Let's do it. Ma 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 MacGyver and Five. It's time for MacGyver and Fiverr. MacGyver and Fiverr. It's time for MacGyver and Fiverr. Because we only have five minutes to recap this week's episode of MacGyver. <laughs> <laughs> Where every single week we recap the adventures of Special Agent MacGyver as he uh, travels around the world. Who, not like uh, Michael Knight, very much so stayed locally to the United States. Yeah, and particularly the Southern United States, kind of like from California to Texas. <laughs> yeah, we thought the episode would wrap themselves back up and like characters would reemerge, but they didn't. No, it's very week to week episode. I think about like yeah. a Law and Order, right? Where it's like you have like the bad guy of the week. <laughs> Well, don't actually think of Law and Order because now you're just gonna sing. <laughs> it's a good one. It's probably one of the better uh, entrance music. A little bit <laughs> entrance music. What do you call it? Intro music. Uh, probably a theme song. What is MacGyver's? What's MacGyver's what first name? We don't know. We don't know. I found it. He hasn't. We haven't said it. Why are you spoiling it right in front of me? I'm not gonna spoil it. That could be literally the season one cliffhanger ending. Uh, I don't know if it's ever going to tell us. Or like it pans over to his birth certificate or something, right? And then <laughs> season one ends. Uh, but anyways, we're talking episode one. We have five minutes to go, Cam. I got five minutes on the clock here. And uh, we're talking about episode 21, Prisoner yep. of Consciousness, 5, 4, 3, 2, and we open! We're in Russia, baby. Uh, in the, On the countryside, Mac is sitting and eating an apple in a little village when our old buddy Peter spots us. Mac followed him there because he's suspicious why he would just take off to go to Russia. Remember, folks, it's the Cold War. Uh, we learned that a man named Alexander Korsov, a Nobel Peace Prize winner, died three days ago after a police interrogation because of his involvement with an American. Turns out that he and Peter were helping get letters out of the 
the country, but it had nothing to do with espionage. Peter is off to save Alex's daughter, Maria, and Mac wants to help. Peter finds Maria, um, and Mac is kind of like following behind them because he says he won't come. Just then, a car comes up the road, and some very sinister music starts to play, too. Uh, the three policemen come out of the car. They knock on the door. The Russian policemen start talking to Maria in English for some reason, and they want to bring her in for some interrogation. Peter slams the door on them. The cops fall off the balcony, which is suspended over a little pond. They fall into the pond. Mac jams the police car's exhaust with the potato, and they run off. Uh, the police car smokes up, but they're still kind of like chasing us, uh, our trio behind, who take off in a boat. We get a great boat chase uh, through some beautiful, very, very beautiful scenery, and sometimes we hit speeds of up to 65 kilometers an hour. Wow. Mac grabs a blanket and starts to tear it up as he intends to jam, a quote, jam the intake of the boat's jet drive. He takes the blanket and ties it some gas cans and life jackets, throws it overboard, and it all works. The Russian boat loses control, ends up getting beached, and then somehow explodes. We stop the boat, and Maria tells us that her father isn't actually dead, but he's being held in a mental hospital. See, the government told people he was dead so they can wait to see the public's reaction to determine to see if they actually want to kill him or not. So now we're off to Leningrad to break into the mental hospital. They're pretending that Mac is a schizophrenic patient and Peter is his doctor. We meet this really sketchy Russian doctor who is clearly into shock therapy. More on that later, maybe. We meet a man named Dmitri who was also a political prisoner. Matt causes some distraction and ends up getting knocked out by the guards. Peter is getting a tour of the facility and finds Mac being restrained. Mac needs, uh his own lockpick so he can break out while Peter breaks in the drug cabinet of the head nurse. Uh, back in the ward, Mac finds out that Alex is actually in something called Ward Zero, which is right above us, but we still need to get keys. He takes a light bulb, cracks it open, and uses the inner parts to mold a key uh, to get the hell out of the cell. Cam, over to you. Uh, to get out of the cell, and on top of that, he needs to find a way to get the guard's attention and uh, pretty much distract him. So after entering the janitor's closet, he finds a metal pail, a rag, and some cocking compound to make a form of Russian crazy, crazy glue. After luring the guard into the janitor's room with a mop, the guard comes and grabs the bucket with the glue on it, sticking his hands to it, unable to now use his hands uh, while Mac runs out of the room. The patients in Ward K make a bunch of disturbances to distract the guards while Max goes and gets Dr. Er, Alex Karsoff uh, from Ward Zero to let him out. Meanwhile, all the other patients are going nuts, causing chaos, keeping the guards busy. Dr. Corrin is then seen leaving the premises with white powders. One of the guards picks it up on it. Uh, it's apparently a powerful psychoparic drug. Mac brings Mr. Karsoff into the main ward, hiding it from the guards with some sleight of hand, hiding it behind some curtains. Their plan is to have Maria work in the hospital cafeteria uh, after she breaks inside and then having her come in to help them escape. The next morning, the guards come in and accuse Mac of being part of the drug smuggling ring. Chaos breaks out again and Mac starts to fight the guards as well as the other inmates there uh, while he starts to make his way, his way out uh, with Dr. Torrin or Mr. Torrin. Or Dr. Torrin. Mario poisons the guard at the lunch station uh, while they all come to work there, uh, making them super confused and drowsy and unable to do anything, so they pretty much just walk on past them. They all escape the asylum and everyone lives happily ever after. Another short one. Yeah. A minute clear. What see is it is do we need to change our time frame? Um I mean I could probably put more detail into this. Well, I'm wondering because it seems like on uh on Night Rider we were pretty close every single time. Yeah, maybe this show's just not as it has a lot of filler. Is it maybe not as but then there are some earlier on episodes but of we've, Mac. We've only we've <laughs> have, ever have, we've missed two on Mac though. Yes, we have missed two on Mac. But I feel like out of our last maybe five or six episodes, we've had a few that have ended like 30 seconds or more. Is it us? Are we getting too good at this? Um, I think it's very much... I could make this even shorter, right? I could go... <laughs> They make their way out of the prison. No, but remember, and... it's not for us. It's for those who don't want to watch a full 45-minute episode. We need to recap this for them. I guess we could probably... I mean, you're pretty good at keeping it. I'm normally the one making it a little bit shorter. So I could probably put a little more detail. I think I think we should all be putting detail in. Of course, we have episode 22 coming up next week. And then following that on Two Seasons Pod episode 107.1. Uh, that Q. very much could be the, the Kim Mitchell hour. That could be another Kim Mitchell Hour, of course, folks. Uh, go back somewhere around episode 
42-ish, maybe. Uh, we do have kind of like a 30-minute, like, Kim Mitchell special where he came on uh, more kind of, there was, or rather, it was like a mix in the feeds, um, kind of like a mix in the podcast feed, and we ended up getting the Kim Mitchell show showing up there on our feed. You can go listen to it. You yeah. take some callers. Lots of callers in that show. Would recommend. At one point, um, it was actually very uh, incredibly interesting and only available for the video uh, viewers up on the Patreon. Um, he uh, he put uh, he 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 was pulling out his hair, and he was saying, "I'm not pulling fake hair out of a wig. I'm pulling out my real hair. This is real. It's real." And uh, it was it was odd because I don't think any that wasn't really a question that I kind of come up. Nobody was really asking him if that was the case. Yeah, no one's asking about his hair. It's just uh, some people's point of pride, right? Yeah, no one wants to have a bald friend. <laughs> yeah, and then and then he uh, and then he when when he had finally pulled out all the hair out of the wig, he said, "Oops, somebody's calling me from outside the door." And then when he came back, he kind of came with, with a with a new wig that was very much so jostled, kind of three quarters off to the side. And even though nobody could see this happening, he was telling the listeners, "No, no, this this I I never I've never pulled my hair this out before. Real hair. This is real. This is real. Really, just caught a lot of people off guard." Yeah. Um... That, that one we can probably do a little more digging into. Yeah, we'll have to, especially for the uh, for the in, in, in an audio medium. It was just very confusing. See if we can get Booker T on the pod. To See if we can get this. Booker T. Of course, famous Canadian, as we know, that's canon. That's canon. Uh, he is Canadian for sure. He's definitely not Canadian. Okay, what is he? Probably American. You sure? Yeah, I'm gonna confidently say that Booker T is an American citizen. He is a born. He's a true. He's born and raised. In Atlanta, Georgia, Louisiana, uh, they're kind of close. They might touch. Whoa, I think, whoa, actually. whoa, whoa, whoa! That'd be a wise. His full name is not T. De- Devin Booker T. No, is it's it Robert Robert Booker T. O. Huffman. Yeah. The fuck, man! My world is turned upside down. Yeah, your, your world is shattering right now. I didn't know that. Uh, I didn't know that Booker T. meant so much from you. Of course, he doesn't to you. God, so you were really, I mean, you know, like we had said. I didn't know what he looked like until now. Like we kind of opened up the show with the tears surrounding the 2001 uh, Stanley Cup Finals cam. I can only imagine in the 2004 Royal Rumble. Didn't Ronda Rousey win the Royal Rumble last weekend? And Brock Lesnar. How'd that go? It was great. Great for the UFC? I I don't know how it would be great for the UFC. (laughs) Both UFC fighters. It just means the UFC is better than WWE. I don't think that's what it means at all. I don't know. I'm just saying. Dana White seems pretty happy. Oh, was he stoked on it? I don't know. Uh, I, bet he bet, I bet he doesn't give a shit. Probably not. I mean, they're making more money with WWE than they ever made in UFC. How did she win it? Uh, it was down to her and Charlotte at the end. And then she's kind of... Charlotte went for the big boot to the face. Yeah. Missed it. Charlotte, like... So she had, like, one leg up on the top rope. Ronda kind of got the leverage and knocked her over wow so you just got to get them out of the ring yeah oh but over the top they have to hit the floor but they have to go over top of the so you can't slide them through no gotcha yeah no cool and how did brock win fucking brock just came in at number 30 and then just won oh it it came to a nice showdown there with him and drew mcintyre at the end but uh so he was maybe he he shouldn't have won who knows but is this his first appearance back wwe for a while no no he's been pretty regular since uh the summertime okay yeah he's got to be a big star there yeah yeah he's a big name who else are the big names in wrestling these days in wwe sure uh yeah becky lynch roman reigns seth rollins they're still all kicking it yeah john cena's gonna get a pop anytime he shows up does he not show up as much anymore no we haven't seen him in a little while just because he's old and tired hey, he's doing hollywood now oh right i forgot he's in movies and he's in hbo max's peacemaker what's that Eh, it's just a show. Okay. <laughs> well, let's plow ahead here. Uh, we should probably get on to the final game of the evening. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. I'll kick us off, Cam. It's Headliner Ass Tonight. Hey. 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 Headline or Ass Hey. 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 Or other headlines, uh, mostly other headlines, to see what is real and what is fake. Mm. Cam, headliner asked time, catfish farmer targets online catfish. 
Okay, this sounds a list feels a little too on the nose. Um, but uh, so you know, you're so you're breeding cat. So how how is this some kind of like retribution thing? Like was this guy catfished in a previous you know previously? How do you think the name catfish started? Uh, I'd have to ask Neve. Can we get Neve on the phone? <laughs> Can we get Neve and Max on the phone? St- dial him up. Yeah, just not Cam. No, we, yeah, we don't want to. No, not Cammy. We don't Man, want- do you know they put out fifty-eight episodes per season right now? That's great because they're just they can do four days, right? They're they're just like. Let me interview you. Like, oh, this is so sad. Then they just Google the person's phone number. Like, it's all oh, right because it's all like, uh, yeah, they don't have to Zoom travel now, right? It's so ridiculous. Yeah. That's too bad. They're pumping out so much content. Yeah, it hasn't been as good since it went online, unfortunately. Yeah. But, uh, back to the catfish, catfisher. Um, yeah, I think the two are unrelated. He has a personal kind of vendetta against catfishes or catfishers but he also just happens to raise catfish like it's just like an ironic thing that he's into uh so i'm i'm gonna say this is a headline this one's asinine (laughs) it's a little too good to be true it was it was yeah it was way too good to be true uh okay cam here we go headliner asinine seventy thousand dollar attachment turns your tesla into a camper van seventy thousand dollars uh so i've camped at a camper van before uh there are those you know it's like mercedes sprinters of course as we all know uh what's up slobs if you're out there listening uh you gave away all of your possessions shannon wants to do that you're pretending to be happy yeah shannon she wants to do that she's like well let's just live the van van person or van life i don't think Cam, you have too many bikes and too many punching bags that's for what a i mean van. I, I need to have those things <laughs> i need punching bags yes um anyway camper vans um notoriously small but uh, from what i know about a tesla maybe if you ripped off the back 70 grand is a lot so i'm gonna say they rip off the back uh, a little fold out attachment to it so you have a bed um i guess if it's these one of those oh you know what i'm gonna go ahead and assume it's one of those new cyber trucks that you make it bigger on the back kind of tent style it so you can have a bed back there small little kitchenette it pulls out the side 70 grand yeah you can make that happen tell me better because that's a headline cam this is one is a headline here for you of course as we know tesla has a wide variety of accessories that can add uh to your tesla making the experience more enjoyable but recently a company called form uh all capitals has developed a stylish camper accessory package to cam like you said add to your new tesla cyber truck wow um, i got it eh? yeah uh so essentially it's a really large and expandable box that fits into your cyber truck's bed when this unit is expanded it does have an impressive 71 square feet of interior space including a seep- sleeping area a small kitchen a portable toilet and even a wall mounted shower what's more is that the unit comes with a 400 watt solar panel system which you can use to power the uh lights in your camper or even charge up your cyber truck the initial run uh is coming in with 500 units but they'll definitely have to get more uh in the near future because so far over 50 million dollars in pre-orders have uh, been already made which is about 1100 units so they've doubled what they thought they would kind of sell initially uh get it for your cyber truck okay don't smash that glass though yeah because that apparently doesn't work that's that smashes uh, more Tesla headlines here. Tesla recalls 53,000 cars because they won't stop at stop signs. What's up, folks? We're a Tesla podcast now. We talk about COVID and Rogan and Tesla. Yeah. Um, big, big warning. At the big, front. yeah, big warning. If you're about to listen to the show, Cam and I get Elon Musk tattoos live on air. Are we going to have to do something to like for Spotify or are they just going to listen to our topics? Uh, yeah, well, actually, recently, Cam, because of comments, um, because of comments that you made, a lot of, uh, a lot of artists have, have, uh, have decided to remove their entire catalog due to, uh, some of your comments. I said black ice, not black guys. <laughs> right, right, right. And that, and that was really in, in that Twitter storm that you really sort of unloaded on everybody. You were really trying to make people convince that, but it didn't work too well. No, especially not at the beginning of the uh, Black History Month. Not Cam, a good time. Cam, could you say that headline again, please? I mean, Tesla recalls 53,000 cars because they won't stop at stop signs. 
Yeah, I don't know, like, oh my god, this fucking self-driving thing, I can believe anything to do with self-driving, right? Because it's AI, and it's gonna go wrong, and it's ones and zeros, and hey, sometimes... Sometimes you're the one, sometimes you're the zero. <clears throat> sometimes your fucking Finder application won't open on your MacBook, and you have to force quit Finder, and you're like, how the hell am I supposed to do that? Like, this shit happens, right? Um, I uh, what, what I find more troubling about that, actually, is that not, like, that... F- over 50,000, I mean, that's how many they were calling, but at least 50,000 people are using the self-driving tech so much that they've noticed the problem. That's like, not what that means at all. It no, but, to- but I was going to say, like, if you had a Tesla and you drove your car, mm-hmm. you, you, you use the old brake and the old, I guess it's not gas, the go, uh, you use the two pedals, presumably you wouldn't come into an interference where... This uh, your car's not stopping at stop signs, right? Because you would be doing it yourself. There would be you not stopping at the stop sign, not your car not stopping at the stop sign. Um, where, yeah, this probably has you know something to do with the maps and the AI, and it's like, you know if in, in a new subdivision it doesn't realize a stop sign's there. However, the tech works. Uh, so it all sounds fine and good, um, folks. Turn off your auto drive, drive yourself. That's a headline. This is a headline for not the reasons you think, though. It's actually built into the programming that it won't stop (laughs) completely at stop signs. It's a rolling stop. So the technology behind it, there's a few different ways you can drive your Tesla car. Uh, One of those is in chill mode. These are real. Chill mode, average mode, or assertive mode. So assertive mode is the problem that they're seeing, and the state's going against and saying, hey, we're not okay with this. In assertive mode, if the Tesla approaches a four-way stop, in less at less than 5.6 miles per hour or 9 miles per hour and it detects no other road users or pedestrians are near the intersection it will carry on traveling at that speed instead of coming to a complete stop at the stop sign i do this too i very much do this too. so so it's the it's the oh uh, we used to call it the california roll the california roll okay. yeah so this i mean let's be honest cam i do this frequently if i it's 2 a.m i'm driving it's your stop yeah, I'm not stopping. I'm in a standard car. I'm not going back to first. Um, anyway, so the government's not too happy about this. They want to ban that because obviously that is breaking the rules. But shit, if you're in a hurry, you're in a hurry. But I don't get it. So even if you were driving, like if you're going below five point whatever miles per hour and you're slamming on the brake, no, the car won't stop. stop. It'll stop. Then it's, w- it's because your Tesla cars, you don't have to drive at all. Like, you can just say it's on autopilot and you just chill. And yeah, just... The, that's the problem, the autopilot part. Like, that's what I was saying. So if you are... And if you no, were you a... can stop at any time. Yeah, so it's it's only to people who aren't 100% in control of their own car. They're like 92% in control of the car. What do you mean? So are you saying, Tesla, you cannot turn off autopilot? No, you can. Of yeah. course you can. So it's only in the autopilot thing. Correct. That's what I was saying. That's the problem, the fucking autopilot. Not... The fact that it's no, I'm California pro, I'm rolling. Pro autopilot. You're pro autopilot. Hundred percent. That seems so weird to me, Cam. So you're, you're pro. You're pro pilot. So AKA I'm pro pilot. Pro trucker. I'm pro pilot. Pro. Of course, as we know, um, last week here on the show, uh, or sorry, rather next week, we're get, we got Sully. We got Sully here on the show. Uh, Sully Sullenberger, of course. Um, of? Pro, uh, pro pilot. Uh, you know what <laughs> I mean? No, I don't know. Um, it, which is great. I lo- it is great. It's great to have guests on the podcast whose reference is straight over your head. No, but but for me, Cam, what, I'm, what interests me about that is because you're such a do-it-yourself kind of guy. To me, it, you're very much so like, you know, you, you know kind of that you, you want something right, do it yourself? You are that in many, many ways. So I, just, it, I just know computers are better than so I So when am. it comes to driving, I'm just like, I thought, Cam, you know, I thought you would be like, I'd rather do... No, bah, bah, bah. I, I'm happy to. I like the option of it, and I think it'll cause less collisions. It's, I mean, it's obviously going to cause less collisions than you or I driving. Yeah? Okay. Okay. Give me a headline. Give me a headline. You know, like, keep, uh, keep up for next week when Sully Sullenberger comes on the show. Don't know what it is. Uh, okay, Headliner S9. Um, a reporter hit by a car live on air continues reporting the news. Oh, this reminds me in grade six when I was singing uh, A Christmas Carol and someone puked on my shoulder and I didn't miss a beat. <laughs> <laughs> Very much so like this, Cam. I guess were I they mean, standing over top and puked? Yeah, over the top, yeah, over the top on the Was shoulder. it just kind of like bleh, fall off? It was. I had too much craft dinner before we started singing. Oh, but so it did. It did. Did it project past you? 
hit me and the person in front of me. Wow. Oh, this guy got some... Big projectile. Who uh, who did it? Kate uh, Dalfoss. Oh. <laughs> I was going to say fake first, fake last, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> Cam, you've never you've never played the game fake first, fake last. I don't know what that is. Yeah, uh, you know if uh, if you wanted to say somebody's name but not say their name, you say a name and we have to guess if it's a fake first or a fake last. <laughs> so you would say like Kate Johnson, <laughs> and then I guess fake first, fake last. Um, sorry, go on. Uh oh yeah, so about this one. Uh, getting hit by a car though, man. I don't know if you could continue to report the news. You'd be like, "Fuck this job! I hate this. Like, I don't want to do this anymore." This is the third time I've been hit by a drunk driver. Um, was it at the Freedom Rally? Maybe. Oh, uh, or was it just uh, the snow out here is incredible, folks. You wouldn't believe it. It's coming down hard here in Minnesota. You can expect another four. And, <laughs> <laughs> and just today. And roads are slippery. Uh, back to you, Jim. Uh, please call the ambulance. <laughs> That's a headline. <clears throat> Cam, this one is a headline here for you. This is a story out of West Virginia where a reporter named Tori Yorgi of WSAV Television uh, was getting ready to report about a broken water main in Dunbar, West Virginia, when an SUV came into the shot and slammed right into her. So here is what happened. It was a two-lane stretch of road, two lanes in each direction, with a large, grassy median in the middle. Uh, the water main is broken, so traffic can't go any further. They have construction crews. It's very much like it just happened Mm -hmm. so a cars are having to u-turn around and then being escorted to the other side of the highway and this woman goes for her u-turn and i don't know how people lose control of cars (laughs) just somehow go (laughs) somehow maybe we should have fucking somehow yeah at least maybe if the cars drove themselves less people would go and control to be fair i did think i do think this suv hit this woman at less than (laughs) 5.8 miles per hour uh so anyways um the woman goes down so does the camera and all you hear on uh all you hear on the air is oh my god i was just hit by a car i'm okay i'm okay uh the woman driving the car can also be heard saying i'm so sorry i'm so sorry are you okay uh uh, miss yorgi stands back up and she says that's why it's live I think it'd be funnier if the little girl went, are you the lady from the news? <laughs> Making your autograph. Oh, my God. Am I on live television? Oh, my <laughs> God. My kid Jimmy is at home watching. All right. You want a headline? Mm-hmm. Fortune cookie gives North Dakota man lottery numbers to win $4 million. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I guess eventually this had to happen. Right? Not if, really. Well, if there's, so, you know, if there's however many millions of fortune cookies going around, yeah. however many millions of lottery Lotteries, tickets being yeah. bought, eventually, of, over the course of 40 years, you know, eventually the two things are going to have to swerve together and it's going to have to happen. Um, Like the laws of fucking whatever. Do you play the lottery? No. Yeah. I've been given lottery tickets before. I like the I like uh, at Christmas time. You know, I like Christmas. Time. You get some scratch cards, and fun. then you win like six bucks, and then you just like buy more scratch and then cards. You go to Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> See, Cam, that's what keeps happening. You keep finding a $5 bill on the ground and immediately booking a flight to Las Vegas. Kind of like, you know. You, I have one chip of the blackjack yeah, table. You, <laughs> yeah, because by the time you get there, you spend hundreds of dollars to spend that $5. Well, I can't wait to spend it, though. But you can't wait to spend it when you get there. Uh, yeah, the laws of probability are just too much. Like, it would have had to happen eventually. How many years? I'd be curious how many people actually play those numbers, though. You know, usually when you think of somebody playing a lottery number, they'll play they'll play their birthday, you know, their dad's birthday, their kid's birthday, sort of like significant days to them, and then hope that those are the money numbers or something, right? But I guess there is that small section of people who are playing the lottery, like you know, so small that you have to go, like you know, who's going to it? The people playing the lottery who are also going to Chinese food restaurants, who are then also playing the numbers in their fortune cookie like that number is so incredibly tiny but it has to have happened millions of times you're looking at him over the lights yeah i'm looking at him right here cam is this is this the story about how you won four million dollars you're just trying is, to pepper it in this is this is the real headline uh, here. i i hope just um because i was real hot about it and i like the chances i hope this is a headline i'm gonna say this one here is a headline this is a headline out of a north dakota town called Cornelius, where a disabled combat veteran. Let's take a moment for the troops. 
Afghanistan. Ba, 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 ba. 32 years in the Army. And re- got the ticket from the North Carolina Education Lottery. I guess they put a nice little spin to it. Anyway, he says he doesn't usually play the lottery. Uh, oh, sorry. Let me read that again. Doesn't usually play my fortune cooking numbers. That <laughs> <laughs> sounds. See, so already a person who is already playing the I was lottery. Gonna say yeah, because yeah. like I think that'd be. I thought it originally said that he doesn't normally play the lottery. Then just decided this on a whim, which would be a crazier story. Crazy. But no, he does play the lottery. And he's like, I'll play these ones. Gabriel Fierro, uh, sixty. Uh, congratulations, Gabriel. You've made uh, international fame. Probably Gabriel. Sure. That's all I got. Uh, I got one more here for you. Uh, came headliner last night. Teenager wakes up from a coma after hearing the words Chick Fil A. Oh man, I would too. <laughs> Fuck! Imagine you're like three fifteen. You're so hungry. And you're like I can't even. Like, everything else is just brain. Like they're just testing stuff. They're like Taco Bell has a subscription service. Like uh. <laughs> 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 like Subway's five dollar foot longs are back. Uh. <laughs> There's a new Chick Fil A. Sorry, what was that? You're alive. Been alive this whole time. Um, coincidence? Yeah. You know, so, sometimes from what I understand about uh, these things is appa- Oh, I read this the other day. Apparently, people in comas, their brain's still active yeah. and they can still hear things. That's often the case. Yeah, they just can't like control the muscles that would open their eyes or move their arms. I or- feel like my plays. If I'm asking this to you right now. Yes. If I have a coma, this is official, by the way. This is can now. This is canon. <laughs> you better get me a pair of headphones and get me so many audiobooks. Yes. Okay. So all the books that you wanted to read last year. Yeah. We're doing and we're doing the classics. We're going. We're doing Fahrenheit 451. Yeah. We're doing the Any, Lord of the Rings. Anything the Republicans are burning right now, throw it on anything my plate. Anything that's been traditionally burned, including the Bible. What's up? What's up, King James? What up, King? So what is what is this one again? Oh, um, I think people wake up from hearing things they really really like. Uh, I assume this guy loves Chick Fil A. I've never tried it. I've heard great things. Uh, apparently, they're no longer anti-gay. That's so, good. Um, shouts to them. Uh, shouts to the military. Taliban back in power. That's a headline. Cam, this one is a headline here uh, for you. This is a story about an 18-year-old who woke up from a 62-day coma after hearing the words of his favorite dinner spoken. The 18-year-old had a bad accident after a collision uh, with a car while he was driving his scooter. Uh, after requiring six different emergency surgeries, the doctors were like able to stabilize his condition. However, that means that he fell into a deep coma. It wasn't until day 62 when doing a super- when during a supervised visit with his Sorry. family, the teenager's brother told over uh, came over over and told him since you're asleep i'm going to eat your chick-fil-a for dinner wow uh, and at that exact moment the nurse on call, him and killed him. Yeah. <laughs> the nurse on call noticed that his vital signs like spiked up and the teenager began to remain con- uh regain consciousness doctors have no idea why this series of events occurred other than to say that the boy loves chicken Wow, is this a Chick Fil A ad? Be honest. I, no, check no. check the web page. I see no cows telling. I see no cows here telling me to eat it. So, I'm gonna say no. I, this is this is deep dismedia trust. Yes, very much so. Um, but there you go. There you go. That was how you play headliner last night. Okay, great. Well, I guess that uh, ties up our loose ends here. 107 and 106 in the books. 105. 105 in the books. We got one more thing to do here, though. Of course, oh. you know what we're talking about here. Um, it's a new segment on the show. It's called Plug It or Shrug It. 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 What should we do or what should we not do, Cam? I'm going to give you a plug for, uh, here for you this week. Uh, so this week I was going through my Gmail settings, Google Mail. Yeah. Gmail.com. I was going through my Gmail settings and I noticed that I had um, tabs uh, labeled social and promotion. Social would be things, oh, you, yeah, know, those like, are good. Uh, you know, things like that. Promotion, th- various things you've probably signed up for that are sending you newsletters. Now, in my mind, I thought this was similar to a spam folder where it's like it's fucking no. there and 30 days will be gone, whatever. No, Cam, I had like 
over 10,000 emails between these two folders alone that I had no clue was taking up all of this fucking space in and amongst my Gmail, my Drive, all this sort of shit, Cam. So what I got to plug for you this week, go through your email settings. Yeah, this not, I thought this was an easy one. Not only that, here's camera. Here's what something I think you should do because I don't do this too too often. Maybe people are like me; they haven't done this in five, six, seven years. Go through your list and unsubscribe from the shit you don't like anymore. You know that one t- purchase you made on NBA.com after the Raptors won the NBA championship? Yeah, they're still sending you emails. Unsubscribe from that list. We know you don't need it. Remember that one time in grade 12 you went to Boathouse to get a nice new flannel shirt? Yeah, they're still emailing you out there. Go through your folders, unsubscribe from your shit, uh, your, your, your email folder, and your life will uh, feel lighter because of it. Okay, I knew that. Uh, my email tip of the day for you, Cam, is make a... <laughs> Make a filter on your email where anytime the word unsubscribe is in the email itself, it automatically is read. That's a, that's a good tip. All right. My shrug it for the day. Not plugging in. Mm-hmm. Instacart shopping. <laughs> Been there, done that, hate it. I know, I know. Which side of the coin are you talking about? Are you talking about the shopper or the... Being the shopper, not fun. People ask for the most ridiculous things. And so many times you can't find them. They go, I need it. It's for a recipe. And you go, I asked the attendant. You're texting all these things. And they're like, well, ask another attendant. It's not there, sweetheart. It's not there. They don't have craft double-aged barreled smoked cheese, the small pack, not the big pack. Sorry. We can get you the big pack, but the small pack. But I don't want the big pack. Fuck it. I'm done with it. Quit. I quit. Yeah. Done with Instacart. Yeah, and then of course the one of the worst part is they always add on the uh, the micro penis condoms at the very end. Just make that. I did. I did have to get. Um, what did I pick up the other day? Um, it was like yeast infection cream, and I I had to text the lady be like, "Hey, they're out of this one. Is this one okay?" She's like, "The ten days should be fine. I wanted the thirty day, but the ten day will work." She wanted thirty days. Yeah. How much bread does this woman consume? I don't know a lot. I mean, the rest of the doors were pretty healthy, so I don't know. Jesus Christ. Uh, well, that was Plug It or Shrug, and that was our final segment. Thanks for listening, folks, uh, to episode 105. Remember, you can rate, review, like, subscribe, subscribe everywhere. Two seasons pod at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. Get some voice notes in there, you know? Get some questions in there. I'd love, you know, uh, eventually we got to reopen our mailbox and see if any, uh, see, you know, if people send us an email. Maybe they have, and it's all just backlogged. Yeah, maybe you've unsubscribed from it. Maybe I unsubscribed from it. Who knows? But either way, uh, that's all we got for you this week. Good stuff. Hey, folks, never forget the Super Bowl coming up. Bet on the score Agami or a final score in the NFL that has never happened in history. I'm Cam McClare signing off. Take care, folks. Continuing tonight on two C's in a pod. 96.7 on your Two C's in a pod, 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 two C's in a